Hello, my name is Hubert McClure, and this is the poll numbers portion of lesson on poll numbers. Um, I'm sorry, lesson on basic math. And we're going to be talking about place value. And we're going to be talking kind of about, we're going to be talking about whole numbers and decimals kind of together, but they're separate, if that makes sense. Um, I just usually start off by saying that our numbers, all of our numbers are written in the form with a decimal always to the right of the last number. So uh, most of the time, most, you know, applications work with whole numbers and then we round to the hundred like money. Um, to the left of the decimals, we have our tens. I'm sorry, our ones. Sorry, I was thinking of the other side. We have our ones. We have our tens. We have our one hundreds. We have our thousands and so on. Ten thousands. Oops, sorry. One hundred thousand. And of course, we go to the millions after that. Okay. And that's to the left of the decimal. So if I give you a number like four, that number means four ones. Think of it as dollar bills. Four one dollar bills. And then if I put another number on it, then that would be five ten dollar bills and four one dollar bills, which would be fifty four dollars. And you will see that a lot of my applications I will use dollars. And a lot of people say, why do you use dollars all the time? Because in our life, there's two things that are important to us most of all, time and money. And when we're dealing with time and money, it sets a priority in our brain housing group. Uh, when I worked at Walmart, I ran a cash register sometimes when it would get heavy like during Christmas time. And I would accidentally shortchange somebody and they would pick it up in a nanosecond. But if I ask them what five times 25 is in a non-money type application, they'd have to use a calculator. So when you're dealing with money and you put everything in terms of money like decimal and place value, you, you grab onto it a whole lot better than if I'm talking about Johnny has five, four apples and Susie has three apples. You deal with it a whole lot better if it's money. And uh, that's why I do that with a lot of my applications. So if I put a three right here, then that means I've got three $100 bills and I have five $10 bills and I have four $1 bills. So that's $354. So that's place value. And what happens is we take place value and we add the right side to it. And you only you see that I only have two place values here. The reason that is, is because most of the time in in day-to-day -day transactions, applications, our dollar amount usually goes to the hundredth. This is the tenth. You remember a while ago I wrote a 10 over here because I was going backwards in my mind. But that's the tenth place, and that's the hundredth place, and it keeps going. The next place would be a thousandth, and I'll show you that on the next screen. But I wanted to start with the tenth and the hundredth because that's what a lot of applications with money, that's what we talk about. We talk about to the hundredth. So if I, if I put a one here, that means I've got a dime. If I put two here, that means I've got two dimes. If I got a three, that means I've got three dimes because a dime is a tenth of a dollar. And we'll get into that later with fractions. And then a hundredth, that's where your pennies come into effect. So if I put a five here, that means I got five pennies. Can't spell pennies. Okay? Five pennies. 
So with just this number right here, I've got three $100 bills, five $10 bills, four $1 bills, one dime, and five pennies. Now, if you follow this same application with place value, you should not have much trouble with adding and subtracting because all you have to do is line up the place values. So let's look at another example. Now, this is an application that would be outside of the norm because not on the left side. The left side, you have $5,000, and every three places, when you count from left to right, I mean from right to, sorry, from right to left, every three places, you put a comma. So that's $5,216. Now, most of you would say, okay, that's 21 cents. But I've got two other place values out here. So we're probably not talking about money now. We're probably talking about a computation or a calculation, um, something that you round to uh, banking industry. They go to like 10 digits um, because they're talking about cents, quarter of cents, and all that good stuff. So anyway, this is the tenth. This is a hundredth. So that's two, two dimes and one penny, and then we got a half of a penny, because that's a thousandth. And then we got a ten thousandth, which is this, is this is a half of a penny, this is a half of a half of a half of a penny. Okay, so, and you see how that progresses as you go further, the next place would be a hundred thousandth, and so on. So this reads 5,216 to the 2152 10 thousandths, okay? And that's a very, very, this right here is a very small number, okay? I'm gonna circle this. That's about 22 cent. Okay, well how do you get 22 cent? Well that's where your rounding comes into effect because this is a five or more, so that's more than five cents. That's equal to five, uh, half of a penny or more. So I'm gonna bump that up to a two. So as, as, if you're talking about money goes, this would be close to 22 cents, okay? In fact, it's 21 and a half cent. But since it's a half, it bumps up to 22. So if you wanted to estimate this or round up in the 100th place value, it would be $5,216.22. Now, what if I wanted to round to the nearest dollar? Okay, I'm gonna write that in red. Round. To the nearest dollar. Okay, the key word here is dollar. Round to the nearest dollar. That means round to the nearest one. And I'm going to put under that in in uh, parentheses, in red, I'm going to put, and this this pen this pen goes crazy every once in a while, so I need to change pens. I'm going to take the battery out of this one. Well, that's probably why the battery window. To take the battery out is messed up. So instead of the, I'm going to put the ones, okay, round to the nearest ones. So that means I'm going to focus on this guy right here because that's the one place, okay? In this case, it's the dollar. 
Okay? Now, when you're, when you're rounding up or down, you always look at the number to the right. So I'm going to take my blue, and I'm going to look at this number because it's to the right of the place we're rounding to. So $5,216.20. Well, 2 is 5 or below. And you got to remember this, and I'm going to write this down for you. 5 up, you go up to the next. 4 down, you leave. Okay? Now, these are Hubertisms, so they're not in a math book or anything. These are just Hubertisms. If five are up, you go to the next. Four down, you leave. So this number is four down, so you leave this number as a six. So if I'm rounding to the nearest dollar, my answer is going to be $5,216. Because that 20 cent is not above five, five or above. So let's try another one. So let's go with blank, 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 decimal point, blank, blank. Okay, we're going to go with one, zero, five, one, six, point seven, eight. Now, let's talk about this. Let's put the commas wherever we need to. So on the left side, I'm going to count three places. One, two, three. So I've got to put a comma right here. All right? We always go three places and we put commas on the left side because that's our whole numbers. So we know now we've got $10,516.78. Now, all of us know that 78 cent is above 50 cent. So if I was to ask you to round this to the nearest dollar, you would, you would highlight this little point right there. That means you would look at this number, and that number is five or above. So if I told you to round it to the nearest dollar, nearest dollar, if I told you to round to the nearest dollar, you would say $10,517. Well, what, Hubert, what if I told you to, what if I asked you to round to the nearest ten, ten dollars, or the nearest ten, or the nearest ten, it would say nearest tens, okay? If I, if I'm going to do this in blue, if, it, if, if the direction said I want you to round to the nearest Tens, not tenths, but ten. Not ten, T-H, but tens. The nearest ten, I'm going to go back to my original problem. Here's the tenth place right here. I'm going to look at this number, and that is six of a five or above, so that's going to bump that number up to a two. So that's going to be 10,000. Five hundred Okay, something's wrong with my pen. Five hundred. Oh, I'll switch batteries. Sorry about that. 500, oops, let me change colors, 500 and 
20. Now, why is it 520? Because this 6 is 5 or above, and you're going to bump that up to a 2 because we're rounding to the nearest tens. And that's how you do rounding. Uh, I'm going to do one more in red over here. I'm going to do red, and I'm going to do round to the nearest tenth. Now notice this time it has a tenth, not a ten, but a tenth. That means I'm going to be looking at this guy. I'm going to, I'm going to change that number or leave it alone based on the one to the right. Now, is A 5 or above? Yes. So that means I'm going to bump that 7 up to an 8. And now my answer is going to be, if I round to the nearest tenth, $10,516. And, oops, that's supposed to be a decimal. And 8, 80 cent. I rounded up. Okay, because that eight right here was five or above. So, you see that whenever you have place value involved, you can round the directions or the instructor or whatever the case may be, may ask you to round. And it will ask you to round to the nearest one, ones, it will ask you to round to the nearest tens. It may ask you to round to the nearest tenth. The point being that you always look to the number, you look at the number to the right of where you're rounding. Well, Hubert, what if, let's do this in another color. What if, what if I wanted to round to the nearest thousand? Okay, not 1,000, 10,000. 10,000, wow. If I wanted to round to the nearest 10,000, not TH, but 10,000, well, let's look at our place value. That's ones, that's tens, that's a hundreds. What's this? That's a thousand. What's this? 10,000. So here's where I want to, that's where I want to, now, do I look at the zero? Yes. Zero is four or below. So this round to the nearest 10,000, my answer would be 10,000. Because that, that number right there is not four and above. So then you would just make it 10,000. Okay. Now what have I said? And I'll do one more color. And I'm trying to keep this all on one board so you can, you know, look at it as we go. I'm going to do one more color. We'll do burnt orange. Okay. What if I said round to the nearest thousandth? Round to the nearest thousand. No, I'm sorry. I might have said thousand. But no TH. Just, well, I'm sorry about that little mark there. I don't know why it's doing that, but we'll just work through it. Okay, round to the nearest thousand. So now I'm going to be looking at this guy, and I'm going to look at the number to the right, which is five. Five or above means I'm going to change that zero into a one. So my answer would be 11,000. Okay, I'll just mark through that. 11,000. So if you round to the thousandth, thousand, that would be 11,000. And think about it. What is $10,516 closer to? 11,000 or 10,000? Well, since that's a five, you're over $500, which is halfway. 
So therefore, it would be closer to 11,000. Okay? And that is kind of a little bit on place value. And, and in the future lessons, we're going to be talking about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with both whole numbers and decimals.